Hello, I'm Adrian, opening with a little bit of Miser Lou by the late great Dick Dale. And that piece of music is the greatest example I can think of of the guitar technique of tremolo picking. And I'm not going to be talking specifically about Miser Lou in this video. If you would like to see me do a detailed song lesson on that tune, then do let me know and I'll try and make it happen. But what I thought I'd do is take a more general look at the technique of tremolo picking. Now this is one of these essential guitar techniques I think that will be useful to you in just about any style of music. It's obviously a big part of the surf guitar sound but you hear it a lot in gypsy jazz, in metal, in indie music, in post rock, just about any genre you can think of really. And what I want to do in this video is explain exactly what tremolo picking is. I'm going to be talking more generally about picking technique and I'm going to show you a few exercises that I hope will help you with your tremolo picking speed and consistency. So let's start by trying to define the term tremolo picking. Now here's one dictionary definition I found for the word tremolo and as you can see it comes from the Italian for shaking or trembling and on the guitar you get that shaking sound by rapidly repeating the same note, something like this. <laughs> And usually it's a single note, but you can tremolo pick two notes or a chord. I think a good example of that is Link Ray's Rumble, where the, you've got this tremolo picked triad shape. Now, sometimes when you're tremolo picking, you just want to do that as fast as you possibly can with no regard for the actual timing of, of the notes. Sometimes you want to be thinking about a specific rhythm. So you might want to tremolo pick in a 16th note rhythm or a triplet rhythm or a 32nd note rhythm. So for me, tremolo picking is different from just alternate picking very fast or speed picking. Tremolo picking is more about playing the same note multiple times, sometimes playing a little melody along the length of a single string, such as we found in, uh, in Miserlou. Also important not to confuse tremolo picking with the tremolo effect that you get from some guitar amps and tremolo effects pedals, where that shaking effect is produced by a rapid change in volume coming from the amp or from the pedal. So tremolo picking is all about fast and efficient picking hand technique. And the advice that I have for you here applies not just to tremolo picking, but to picking technique in general. And what I want to do is go over the basics to start with and talk about simple things like what kind of pick to use, how to hold the pick, how to attack the strings. And I think this will be a good opportunity for all of you to take a close look at your picking hand technique. If you're a beginner, I think it makes sense to start off by doing things in the right way right from the start. If you're a more experienced player then I often think that it's a good idea to check in on your technique from time to time and you may well find things that aren't working for you or things there that you might need to improve and I've certainly found that with my own technique on a few occasions where that I've been doing things that have been slightly inefficient or weren't working for me and I've had to change or adapt my technique. So I'm going to try not to lay down any rules or laws here but what I'm going to talk about are the kind of technical things that work for me and that I hope will work for the majority of players. So for speed and for techniques like tremolo picking the type of pick you use really does make a huge difference and I think it's important to experiment with different types of picks so different thicknesses, different materials, different sizes until you find what works for you. Now Personally speaking, I do sometimes change the pick I use depending on what tone I'm going for, depending on what style of music I'm playing, but the majority of the time on an electric guitar I'm going to use a standard size and shape quite thick pick. So for fast picking, for tremolo picking, my first piece of advice is go for a thick pick. And the reason for that is when you attack the strings with a thick pick then the string seems to respond instantly to the attack. If you're using a floppy pick it feels like there's a slight delay before you get the note and that makes fast playing much harder. Now how thick you go is entirely up to you. I would experiment with different pick thicknesses. As I say much of the time I'm using a standard sort of heavy gauged pick around about one millimeter thick but you, you could go a lot thicker than that if you prefer and I think for Gypsy jazz players tend to go for really thick picks and also for certain styles of metal and more aggressive music then you might find that you know, going up to two millimeters or beyond might work for you. 
Another consideration is whether you want to use a pointy pick or not. Now personally I don't use a pointy pick very much. I prefer the tone and the feel of a more traditionally shaped pick but a lot of fast and technical players swear by the old pointy pick and I think the reason for that is again you've got less resistance and less friction when you're crossing between strings and I think the majority of super fast super technical players I think you'll find they're using quite thick quite pointy picks. Now as far as specific picks go I've got a selection of different picks that I sometimes use here. Um, a lot of the time I'm using just a Fender heavy pick. This is a standard shape fender pick this is about a millimeter thick I, I would guess so that's that's quite nice um, I've actually got an endorsement deal with Ernie Ball and they send me a load of picks as well so I've recently been using some of their picks um, this one is is nice this is a one millimeter um, Everlast pick and that's got a, a nice kind of feel to it um, sometimes I might go a little bit thicker I mean here I've got an Ernie Ball two millimeter thick pick and this is a really kind of hefty thick pick. Um, too thick for me most of the time this kind of pick but it, it might work as I say for metal or for gypsy jazz something like that. Um, as far as pointy picks go uh, the, the classic is the Dunlop Jazz 3 pick and this is used by a lot of rock and shredders. Um, certainly with the pointy tip to the pick it makes fast playing seem a little bit easier. Uh, for me the standard Jazz 3 pick is a little bit too small so I, if I'm going to use a Jazz 3 I think I prefer the uh, I think they call it the XL Jazz 3 which is just a slightly bigger but it's still got that pointy tip and just recently I've come across these Ernie Ball um, Prodigy picks and these are really nice too they're not only are they thick and pointy but they've got this kind of beveled edge to them which again seems to make crossing the string that much easier so um, if you're really interested in playing super fast then I'd suggest giving these um, prodigy picks a go. So in summary as far as pick selection goes you certainly want to go thick you may want to go pointy and what I suggest you do is just go out and buy a whole load of picks experiment and see what you like the feel and the sound of the best. So I hope you have your thick and possibly pointy pick at the ready. Let's talk about some picking hand technique considerations in a bit more detail and I'm going to demonstrate this just by playing a single note this C note here at the fifth fret on the on the G string I'm just going to play that note repeatedly with a down up motion of the pick and you can see my picking hand position here and uh, you can see that my fingers are I like to have my fingers tucked in I'm forming kind of a loose fist with my picking hand Generally I think it's a bad idea to anchor yourself on the guitar body with the fingers of your picking hand. For me that tends to restrict my speed and movement a little bit. It occasionally works for some players so I'm not saying it's wrong but for me I think I would try and avoid that. Um, if I have got some kind of anchor then it's with this part of my forearm on the top of the guitar and I'm also just sometimes touching the bridge with the side of my hand and that tends to keep keep my picking hand steady when I'm fast picking or when I'm tremolo picking. Now I think the most important thing when you're picking fast is efficiency and you don't want any unnecessary or any wasted movements in your picking hand so uh, I'm trying to keep all of the movements here very very small and I'm trying to only have the very tip of the pick in contact with the string so that there's less friction. Um, you, you'll feel that if you dip the pick down too deeply inside the strings then you get all this kind of drag and friction and it's impossible to cut through the string smoothly so I'm trying to keep only the very tip of the pick in contact with the strings and I'm also trying hard not to move too far either side of the string after I've picked it I'm just moving a very small amount here you don't want your pick to be flying too far up and down because that's just unnecessary movement and it will slow you down. What might also help is just having your pick at a slight angle as well so rather than having the pick completely parallel to the string you might just want to turn the pick so that it's cutting the string at just a slight angle. I don't think you want to go as far as, as 45 degrees but just a slight angle cutting into the string seems to help again it seems to reduce friction. So for me the tremolo picking motion is coming mostly from my wrist and a little bit from my forearm. And it seems to me like it's a, just a slight rotation of my wrist. 
and it's not the only way to do it. You see some people whose tremolo picking technique comes more from the forearm. Um, I mean, famously, Eddie Van Halen has this, what to me seems like quite an eccentric technique where his, his wrist is kind of cocked out like this and he's he's rotating his, his forearm. Um, that, that doesn't work for me, but it, it obviously works great for people like Eddie Van Halen. And uh, I've also seen some gypsy jazz players using a similar technique. So um, more unusual, as I say, it doesn't work for me, but might be something you want to experiment with. Um, for me, the best tremolo picking technique is just very small movements coming mostly from the wrist and a little bit from the forearm. And finally, I think the most important thing is to relax. And it's sometimes the opposite of what you feel you need to do when you're playing fast. You feel like you've got to try as hard as you can and just really tense up to get those fast notes to come out. But I think you need to go in the opposite direction, stay really loose, really relaxed, and that's where the tremolo picking speed will come from. Also, with a lot of tremolo picking stuff, you need stamina. I mean, to get through something like Mizaloo, you're going to have to be relaxed to play that properly. Um, because if you're tense, you're not going to be able to get through about five or ten seconds without your picking hand forearm feeling like it's going to fall off. So I have some fun exercises for you to work on your tremolo picking. Uh, actually they're not that fun but they're good for you and as with most things technical my advice to you is to start slowly, use a metronome, make sure everything's technically perfect before slowly pushing up the speeds. Quite boring advice but it works kids! This first exercise then is very simple. We're going to be focusing on playing a single note and again it's going to be this C note at the fifth fret on the G string and we're going to be tremolo picking our way through various rhythmic subdivisions along to a metronome. And I think this is possibly one of the simplest and best ways to work on your tremolo picking speed and control and accuracy. Now as I said earlier not all tremolo picking has to be metronomic and in time. Sometimes you just want to go as fast as you can and kind of float a little bit with the timing but I think when you're practicing it makes sense to practice things with a metronome and to be in control of those rhythmic subdivisions. I've got my metronome here and I'm going to start quite slowly. I've got 120 BPM on this and I'm just going to alternate pick this note here, C, 5th fret on the G string, and I'm going to start with an 8th note subdivision. So I'm thinking um, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and that would sound like this. We've got... Uh so it's still quite slow at this stage, but I'm just focusing on all of those technical things that I mentioned just now. So I'm trying to keep all of my movements very small and efficient. I'm trying to stay relaxed. Just have everything in time, nice and relaxed, solid with the metronome. Once you're comfortable with that, you can work your way up through the subdivision. So maybe you could try uh, eight note triplets. That would sound like this. One, two, three, four. And then moving on to perhaps sixteenth notes and uh, Uh, you're feeling frisky you might like to try 16th note triplets and uh, that would sound like this two three four there we go that, that feels pretty fast to me that's probably nearing my speed ceiling I would think but um the beauty of this exercise is you can set the metronome at whatever speed you want and then just gradually push up the speed. So um, maybe that will be way too fast for you in the beginning. Uh, if you're already a shredder then you might like to go even faster than that. Uh, the other important thing I think is to try this exercise on different notes. So try it on different strings. It's going to feel completely different tremolo picking on the low E than it feels to tremolo pick on the high E. And it's going to feel different 
um, the, the fret that you're playing at. So there's sort of more string tension or less string tension depending on whether you're playing low down or in the middle of the neck or playing high up. Next exercise we're going to make things a little bit more interesting and we're going to tremolo pick our way through a minor pentatonic scale along the length of a single string. So let's stick with the G string and let's play a G minor pentatonic scale. So the notes we need for that are going to be the open G and then got the third fret, fifth fret, seventh, tenth, and then 12th and then we'll go back again and once again we're going to tremolo pick our way through this exercise you can try this with some of those rhythmic subdivisions I spoke about in the previous exercise I'm going to try this with 16th notes and uh, let me get my metronome going let's go a little bit faster for this let's try 140 bpm 16th notes so here we go, one, two, three, four. So that's a basic exercise. Uh, depending on your level that may be too fast for you that may be too slow so gauge that according to your current level and obviously you can try that on all of the other strings as well in fact I think that's important to give that a try too. So this next exercise I think is a really powerful one for improving your tremolo picking speed and personally I found it to be a really good way to break through that speed ceiling that all of us seem to reach with technical things at some time or another. And the concept is this, we're going to be playing short 16th note bursts of tremolo picking. So let's start with our C note again and uh, the first exercise we're going to be playing four 16th notes and then we're going to be playing a quarter note. So we've got that quick burst of tremolo picking and then it's as if you have a little bit of a rest. So we've got that kind of idea. So one E and a two, three E and a four. If I try that with the metronome, and I'm going to go and try try and go quite fast here, maybe up to uh, near my own sort of personal technical limit. So let, let's try 200 BPM 16th notes, and uh, just see if I can do this. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> we go not too bad now we can develop this exercise by having a longer burst of 16th notes so let's try adding in an extra beat of 16th notes so we've now got so two beats worth of 16th there one e and a two e and a and once again with my metronome a one two three four try and extend that further let's have three beats of 16th notes not not perfect but not bad and as I say that's right at my technical limit currently um, but I found it's a really good way to sort of push up my speed and I'm sure if I kept practicing that exercise I'd continue to get a little bit faster Now my final exercise is once again using this 16th note burst concept but this time I'm going to apply it to our minor pentatonic scale. So I'm going to be playing the G minor pentatonic scale and let's try doing that rhythm. So four sixteenths and then a quarter on each note in the scale. So. Just, just for a laugh, let's go up to the, the fastest speed that this particular metronome can do, which is 208. And this is probably beyond what I'm currently capable of doing, but uh, let's give it a go. Um, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> That's 
that's tough but not too bad and then you can extend the length of the burst just like we did with the previous exercise so <laughs> That was tough. I think I was just starting to drag a little bit there with the timing, but uh, it, it's good for you, this kind of exercise. So that's it for today's instalment. I hope this video helps you with your tremolo picking technique, with your picking technique in general. Now I'm going to continue the tremolo picking theme next week. And if those exercises were a little bit dull for you, then what I've got next week is a tremolo picking based piece of music, which I've written, which I hope will provide you with a further perhaps more fun way of working on this essential guitar technique. So hope to see you next week for that one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.